We're in this series called Moving Home, and part of, part of this series has been defining the entire narrative of Scripture. So if you're here and you go, I, I just really am not confident with the Bible, I don't understand how it fits together, this series was designed for you to be able to take the Bible and go, okay, here are six words I can understand and kind of fit everything into. Specifically, when it comes to Prescott Valley, we have the opportunity today to talk about why did we make the shift that we made? How did that happen? What part did the Holy Spirit play in that? And what part does the Holy Spirit play in where we are and how we move forward? But we started this whole thing with home. The idea that, that God created very intentionally, put humans on the planet, and those humans had a choice to either follow God's lead, follow where he wanted them, or kind of do their own thing. They choose to do their own thing, become independent, and we called that runaways. That They just began to run away as fast as they could from everything that God told them was good. And now they're on this train, and God steps in and he gathers them into a nation. And he gathers into a nation specifically to begin to show them some things like, one, you will never be good enough to be able to be in my presence. That something is broken deep inside of you that I've got to fix. And, and so with that, then he kind of sets the, the platform for Jesus to step in. Not kind of, he does set the platform for Jesus to step in. And as Jesus steps in, um, it becomes very evident that what Jesus is doing is what we could not do for ourselves. That the sin issue we had, Jesus pays the penalty for that. And then we are established, as we believe in that, we're established in this thing called family. Now, if you've been around church, you've heard the word church, and you probably think of a church as an organization. Today, we're going to talk about, continue on this dialogue, that the church was intended to be a family. That the, the terms that are used in scripture of God the Father, that we are sons, we are daughters, that, that we are brothers, we are sisters. Those are kinship terms that have to do with family and the idea that God is leading this somewhere because what he's ultimately wanted is from all the way back here that we would be in his presence, that we would dwell with him, that we would walk with him, that we'll talk about next week in, in home that he's restoring all of that. But this week when we get to family, this week is important. And it's so important that, that for me, honestly, my Thursday, we do this thing called teaching prep. And on a Thursday, whoever's teaching goes into a room and there's communicators from staff, um, communicators in their own rights and ministries and a couple of other people, they'll be mixed in there. And we sit in a room and whoever's communicating, you just kind of talk through big ideas. Where are we going? What are we doing? How are we doing it? Um, and getting everybody on the same page. But what often happens is somebody will go, oh, that reminds me of this story. Or, oh, that reminds me that we really should emphasize this. And so often coming out of teaching prep on a Thursday, it's like, man, I can't wait to teach because now I feel like it's well-rounded. I walked out of teaching prep this week and went, I think I got the wrong message. There was this inner stirring inside of me going, that's not the message for the church this weekend. And so between Thursday and today, it's been, okay, God, what do you want this to be? Holy Spirit, what are you leaning towards? Holy Spirit, what do you want to say? And I realize it's a scary place to put yourself when you are going to stand and go, the Holy Spirit led me here. And you guys are sitting there going, I'm going to judge every word that comes out of your mouth now. <laughs> but here's the reality. Part of what happened this week is part of the reason that what I think the Holy Spirit was doing was going, if you miss this family, you miss the understanding of what family actually is. If you miss this, it reminds me of my backyard and Pringles. <laughs> Yesterday, I'm in my backyard and I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, where are we going? We're like, it's getting down to the wire. It'd be nice to know where we're, we're going here. And as I'm sitting there, my, my youngest comes out, Farah. And she says something, I didn't hear her because I was listening to something else. And, and as I'm sitting there, I go, what? She goes, tell Sierra, who is her older sister, not to eat my Pringles. She likes them, but they're mine. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll be sure to tell her because she thought she was out there. So she's looking for her, tell her not to eat her Pringles. Then she opens it, pops the top, which... Come on, once you pop, you can't. Okay, just so we're on the same page. She takes out one, 
walks across the backyard to me and hands me one. <laughs> and then she walks back and before she gets inside, she looks at me and she goes, they're really good. If you want more, let me know. <laughs> and I'm like, baby, you don't know. Once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> and in a moment, it was like the Holy Spirit went, that's it. That's what the family's missing. And I was like, what? He goes, that's what the family's missing. The family is feasting on one when they could have it all. They've taken the can that was given to them and they're living like they only got one. What do I mean? Sometimes in our faith, in our faith journey, we live like Jesus is the big deal. He is a big deal. You're gonna hear me say today over and over, I love Jesus with everything I got. But sometimes we treat Jesus like he's higher than anyone else within the Trinity. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But sometimes we are so busy feasting on Jesus that we miss the entire can we we've been given in the Holy Spirit. And today we are going to lean in. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and the difference the Holy Spirit makes in the family. Because the entire story that we're talking about, the entire story when we get to family shifts when we talk about the Holy Spirit. What do I mean? We, we ended this way last week, Matthew 28. And you guys, if I seem excited, I'm excited because I believe, I believe if we'll get this, if we get this, Hear me well, if we get this, it changes everything. That struggle that you have, that you know you have, but nobody else knows you have because you hide it so well, only the Holy Spirit knows you have it, this, this week sets you free. That marriage that you think can't work out, this week sets it free. This week it begins to rebuild. That, that battle that you've had that, that, man, I met Jesus and Jesus changed everything, but I have no idea how to bring that into my life, this week changes that. Your Monday when you go to work and you think church is over here and work is over here, this message changes that. That from this point on, from this moment on, and this is your chance to get up and leave because you are responsible for what you get. This moment when you get this today, whether you're here, whether you're across the screen, whether you're sitting in your lazy boy or you're out in your backyard or you're sitting in these comfy chairs, when you get this, you are responsible to this truth and it changes everything. Ready? Matthew 28, we ended here last week. And then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go, speaking to the disciples, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All three people of the Godhead, the triune God, the God who is three in one, all three people are represented in baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is put on an equal playing field to the rest of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is the one that last week when we had family members who were here and they've said yes to Jesus, they've, they've got the message of Jesus, they believed in Jesus, when they get up and they are publicly going to identify to everybody, what do they identify in? It's not, I'm identifying with Jesus and that's it. I'm identifying with the Trinity, the triune God. I'm identifying that the Father has had a will and part of that will has allowed the Son to take on skin and bones, take my place, die for me, be born again. But I'm also identifying with the fact that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a person and he is just as valuable as the rest of the Trinity. You guys, this is why it changes everything. I'm gonna be really, really honest. For me, I wasn't taught this. I don't understand how for years and years and years of my faith, the Holy Spirit's like weird Uncle Eddie, <laughs> right? He's just, he's just out there. And we don't know how to explain him and we don't wanna get crazy, so we just ignore him. If that's you, you are living off of one chip and missing the entire can. Some of you are like, Pringles aren't good for you. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is. 
But this is where the rubber meets the road because the Holy Spirit changes everything. The Holy Spirit, think about this for a second. God the Father, right, has a throne and he has been seated the entire time. God the Father ain't in a hurry. He's sovereign and in control. Jesus leaves, comes to earth, fulfills his mission, doing the will of the Father, and then he goes where? He goes back when he leaves, he goes to the right hand of the Father and he takes a seat. Which part of the Godhead is active on earth right now? Holy Spirit. What do I mean? Turn over to John chapter 16, uh, 14, sorry. John 14 and verse 15. So Jesus speaking to the disciples, this is, this is they, they claim roughly about 15 hours before he won't be with them anymore. He won't be able to talk to them and influence them until after his resurrection. If you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the father. So he, so catch this. Jesus, the person of Jesus, second person of the Godhead is asking the father who is the father. The father is good. And I get this. When we get to family, you guys, I get it. If you didn't grow up in a family that, that had, that was a positive effect, it's hard to hear that God made us family but we have to be careful that we don't judge God's family by what we experienced in our earthly families. We have to be careful we don't judge our heavenly father by our earthly father's stand standards. We have to go the other way, that we judge our earthly father by our heavenly father's standards. What do I mean by that? Your heavenly father is good. He is a provider. How do we know that? Because he sent Jesus to save us, to rescue us. It was the father's will. And so what we know is in this moment, Jesus is going, Father, provider, would you provide? And notice what he says. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. To help you and be with you forever. So I'm asking him for another helper. Jesus has been a helper. I'm asking him to give you another helper, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Jesus is going, I'm going to leave. And we'll get to this a little clearer in a few more verses, but I'm going to leave. And what is being given to you is another advocate, but it's not going to be like me. It's going to be the spirit of truth, which a couple of verses later, and we'll look at this. It says that that is the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given as a helper to you. The Holy Spirit is given. And where does he reside? The Holy Spirit isn't in some temple somewhere. The Holy Spirit isn't across the other side of the campus. The Holy Spirit isn't just in this room. The Holy Spirit is inside of you and alongside of you in every aspect of life. You have been given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. What is he designed to do to help you? You know what that means? We try and make this spiritual. Okay, so when I read the Bible, then the Holy Spirit helps me. Yes. Okay, when I go to church, then the Holy Spirit helps me. Yes. When you go to work tomorrow, whatever form of work you do, guess who helps you? Holy Spirit. Why? Because he goes with you. See the difference. See the difference. The Holy Spirit goes with you and he wants to help you in that situation. You go home today and you go back to your marriage that's struggling or you go back to your life that you think is broken and the Holy Spirit is there to help you. It says specifically that he's going to be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. What he's saying is I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not leaving you. The idea of being alone if you are a believer, meaning you've put your faith in Jesus, you cannot be alone. Oh, you may feel lonely, but you are not alone because the person of the Holy Spirit, God himself, the Holy Spirit's a person, remember, just like Jesus, just like God the Father, they are three in one. I know it's, it'll bend your mind from now to eternity. But the Holy Spirit is a person and the Holy Spirit is in you right here, right now, which means he is with you later, 
which means he is with you tomorrow, which means he is with you when the depression sets in, when the darkness comes, when you think you're alone. The Holy Spirit is with you in those moments. Verse 26, but the advocate, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said. The Holy Spirit that you have been given will teach you all things. That means for that to be true, that means he has to be part of the Godhead, right? Why? Because to teach you all things, he has to know all things. So the Holy, get this, get this. This is where it gets crazy, y'all. The Holy Spirit, God himself, when you said yes to Jesus, Ephesians is clear about this, that when you put your faith in Jesus, Ephesians chapter one, when you put your faith in Jesus and you believe the Holy Spirit came and took up residence as a seal, as a guarantee of your salvation. The Holy Spirit now indwells you, God himself, and he is a teacher of all things. That means tomorrow when you go to work and you don't know what to do, Holy Spirit, would you help God me? Why? Because the Holy Spirit knows all things. That doesn't just mean scripture. That means he knows all things. Oh, some of you don't get it yet. Those of you that like golf, Holy Spirit could teach you how to play better. He knows how to play golf better than you. And you might just discover he knows how to play better, but you still aren't good at the game. But, but we say that, but here's the thing. We often take the Holy Spirit and only put him in a spiritual category. You want to know how to love your wife or love your husband? You want to know how to raise your kids? You want to know how to balance your books? You want to know how to navigate being a businessman and being in the world? Guess what you have in you every single moment of every day, everywhere you go? The Holy Spirit. And he longs because it's his job to teach you. He wants to be in those moments with you. He wants to walk alongside you. And here's the thing. The Holy Spirit will never lead you away from the words of Jesus. And this is where the rubber meets the road. If we're, if, come on, let's be honest. If I'm a business person and the Holy Spirit's going to lead me to the words of Jesus, then the words of Jesus are going to lead me to what's best for everyone around me. I hate to tell you, businessmen, that might not be the best for your bottom line. Because you may begin to build things into your organization that people look at you and go, why are we doing that? Because that's the best way to love people that need to be loved. Wait, 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 John, you, you, you mean the church? We're doing Prescott Valley? And we're not making it like a church, like everybody else sees, but we're making it for like the other days of the week. You know the wear and tear that'll happen on that building? You know how quickly the Holy Spirit told us to do it. You know it won't be comfortable, right? For everybody else. Like people that like their church the way they like it, you realize you're, you, and we sit as elders and go, yep, we know that. We're just following the Holy Spirit. Wait, it's Thursday, you're in teaching prep. You realize Sunday's coming real quick, yep. You realize you're gonna have to text everybody that was in that meeting or slack them, everybody that was in that meeting and tell them, hey, guess what? We gotta flip this upside down. I don't know what it means. It might mean we have to put verses in on Sunday. It might mean that we mess up the service. I don't know, but I just know God wants to do something different. Yep. We're just following. A couple of weeks ago, I told you about a decision. And, and with that decision, through wise counsel of people, um, a book God put in my, a book that just happened to fall in my lap, right? I believe that the Holy Spirit put a book in my hands and people in my life. And then he walked me through a process to be able to say, you know what? Everything about this is a good opportunity at the wrong time, which makes it the wrong opportunity. That's the Holy Spirit. He walked alongside you may look at that decision and go, man, that's a, that's a non-decision. Why, why, why are you bringing in others and why are you bringing in the Holy Spirit in that? Because every part of our life matters because we've been given the Holy Spirit to be a guide. 
Here's what I mean. Chapter um, 16. But very, uh, verse 7. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. So, so Jesus with skin and bones on, God with skin and bones, declares to us, the family, it is better that I go away. Who's it better for? You. Jesus knew that you having the Holy Spirit in you changes everything. Everything changed. Here's what I mean. The nation that was there, the nation had to, to, to be able to worship in the nation. It was by physical birth. So if you were of the right ethnic class and you were, your parents were both of that and you were born pure into that, guess what? You were in. What that meant was in the nation that you went to a centralized location, meaning there was a temple where it was believed that the presence of God existed. And so now that presence of God was behind a curtain that the average human couldn't get to. But you being born of the right ethnic class into the nation, what that meant was you could go and you could offer sacrifices and you would hand them over to a priest. And a priest would carry those sacrifices through that gained you access, but you went through a mediator, a priest. Another thing they believed is that, or another thing that happened within the nation is you were waiting for this temporary moment and selective moment when God came upon one of their tribe, one of their clan. And when God would come upon them, things like prophets, they would stand up and go, God said. And so there was this temporary moment where God through his spirit, through the Holy Spirit, would show up and be on them and they would do amazing things. The average person born into the nation never experienced the Holy Spirit once in their life. They always went through a prophet or a priest and they were waiting their entire life. When is God gonna show up? When is his spirit gonna show up? And when are we gonna have a fresh word? And there was distance. You could not enter the space where God was. You guys, we live in the best time. Par the next week's series, the next week's ending of the series, home. We live in the best time to be in the story because our story is not this where this is taking place. Our story is that along the way we met Jesus and we put our faith in Jesus. And when we put our faith in Jesus, it says that we are spiritually reborn. That the birth into the family doesn't come through ethnicity, it comes through the fact that we are born by the Spirit through Jesus. So now what happens is rights into the family come by God himself regenerating you and bringing you to life. How does that take place? I believe that Jesus came, he died, he carried my sins to the cross, he buried them and he rose and I'm forgiven. When I believe that, what happens is by spiritual birth, I come into the family. But here's the best part, back to Ephesians. Ephesians says that you receive the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. Okay, so on your worst day, when you're like, oh man, I messed up. Does that mean I'm still saved? Does that mean God's still, okay, quit that game. You know why? Because it was never dependent on you in the first place. It was dependent on Jesus showing up and taking your sins. It was dependent on Jesus doing for you what you could not do. And so what happens is Jesus shows up, Jesus dies for you, and you are given the Holy Spirit as a seal, as a guarantee of your inheritance. So today, today, as you are part of the family by spiritual birth, what happens now is you have the Holy Spirit indwelling you. That means you are the temple of God because the temple is where the presence of God dwells. Where does the presence of God dwell? It dwells in you through the power of the Spirit. That means that now we are decentralized in our worship. That means you can go into the woods and worship. 
That means you can go across the globe into Africa and sit with a group of people who are also family. And all of a sudden you can worship there just like you worship here on a weekend. Why? Because now decentralized worship is about where the family is, not about a building where God is because God's in the family. Oh, it gets more better, you guys, because here's the other thing. It's permanent. It's not temporary and selective. God isn't like, ooh, I like you today, so we're gonna go here. It doesn't work that way. It's permanent. When you said yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit took up residency in you and he is not leaving. It's permanent. So when you read the old and you read through the nation and you see these prophets and they're getting a word from the Lord and they're, guess what? It was through the Holy Spirit and the same Holy Spirit indwells you and the same Holy Spirit wants to guide your life. It's not temporary or selective. Coupled with that, there is no distance. The Spirit's giving you access. Access where? Into the throne room of the Father. Where the Father is on a throne and He is in heaven. And you, through Jesus and His sacrifice, now empowered by the Holy Spirit, have access that the nation never enjoyed. We live in the best time. There is no better time to live than right here, right now. Why? Because the Spirit is with you everywhere you go. And that changes everything. Oh, it changes your Monday. Drastically. And what's fascinating is you, as you get into the writings, and I didn't cover half my verses, as you get into the writings of Scripture, What's fascinating is you get to the New Testament, the New Covenant, and it tells us what Jesus did. And then in Acts chapter two, it talks about a day of Pentecost. Jesus told him it would come. It was the day the Holy Spirit was poured out. And when the Holy Spirit was poured out and he rested on the believers, the rest of the New Testament is them trying to explain that. It's them trying to understand how do we live with the power of God inside of us? What difference would that make? And over and over, you just catch them. The Spirit's leading this way. You get to Acts. Paul wants to go preach somewhere. And it says the Spirit wouldn't let us. See, here's the thing with the Holy Spirit. He wants to be in the day-to-day. Galatians chapter 5. Since we live, talking to the church, talking to the family, there in Galatia, Paul writes, since we live by the Spirit. Since we live. That live is every moment of every day. Everything you do. What should it be empowered by? The Holy Spirit. What should your day-to-day look like? Holy Spirit, where are you leading me right now? Do you know how many times I've sat in meetings and it happened to me just the other day? I'm sitting, I'm having a conversation with somebody and I'm like, Lord, I have no idea what to tell this person. And if I open my mouth, I'm going to sound stupid. Holy Spirit, what do I say? How do I encourage? How do I help them just move the needle slightly? How do I help them heal? And out of nowhere, the Holy Spirit gave words to encourage and empower. And that person walked out thinking they met with God themselves. And I'm like... I'm just a man empowered by the Holy Spirit. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep step with the Spirit. It's the last time you sat and you were perplexed because the Holy Spirit's a helper The Holy Spirit teaches us all things. The Holy Spirit is a guide. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. But you're perplexed. I don't know what to do. When was the last time you just sat and went, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to do? Because if you're anything like me, I'm going to be real honest for the next couple of minutes. I jump back to John and I can problem solve and I can figure it out. 
And it's not until I get down the road of figuring it out and we start to implement that I go, oh, that was a really bad idea. Sorry, guys. But the Holy Spirit wants that moment. I'm the one that stops the Holy Spirit from that moment. I'm feasting on one chip and the Holy Spirit's going, there's so much more. God's like, I gave you everything. And here's what's fascinating. The Holy Spirit, when he teaches you, he won't lead you outside of the book, just so we're clear. Like he's not gonna lead you into a place that you shouldn't be and you get there and you go, well, the Spirit told me to do it. Always go back, back it up with scripture, back it up with community, walk alongside community. That's what God's given us. But don't be afraid to go, Holy Spirit, what do you want today? 17 and a half years old. I'm in a one bedroom apartment. And you guys, as I look back, it was awful. I thought it was amazing. I'm working a night shift. Every dollar I make is so I can go get drunk. I grew up in a missionary home. My mama tells me stories of sitting on the couch at three years old, accepting Jesus. According to scripture, the Holy Spirit sealed me at that moment. But there was a whole lot of life between then and sitting in that apartment that had to do with John being the captain of the ship. That had to do with John thinking he knew something. That had to do with John going, I, I can solve this, thanks. And at 17 and a half, I haven't been in church forever. Been in more pubs. And you know, the Holy Spirit was there. Don't kid yourself. The same Holy Spirit that is here in this moment that we can feel working, that you can sit here and you'll walk out of here, some of you and go, man, the presence of God was in this place. Yes, he was. But the same Holy Spirit that is here, the same Holy Spirit that will inspire us to worship, the same Holy Spirit will go home with you tonight. And when you open that website or you crack that bottle or you go back to the vice that you have or you go back and go, my marriage is fine. We don't talk to each other, that's fine. You are the one that is muzzling the Holy Spirit. See, at 17 and a half, the Holy Spirit was with me. I just silenced his voice. You notice the verse says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. He's there, you're just grieving him. And that's muffled. I know I'm treading on some toes. Sorry, but not sorry. It's too important, you guys. It's too important. Fast forward, John gets married and I'll take the same pornography addiction that existed in my teens right into my marriage and had no clue. And you know what started to happen? The Holy Spirit because I've become attuned to his voice. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit's going, John, this isn't okay. John, you need to change. John, we're bringing this to light. I'm not leaving you the place you were. And what starts to happen is God begins to set me free because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So question for you today, here, across our other campuses. Can you hear the voice of the Spirit? Are you tender enough that you can feel his promptings? Because what's fascinating with this, and I'll close with this, there's so much more, you guys. There's so much more. I love Jesus with everything I've got, but we have to make sure that we don't get stuck on Jesus. We have to make sure that we catch that Jesus went back to heaven and he will come back again. But in the meantime, the active presence of God on the planet is through the person of the Holy Spirit and he lives in you. 
which what that means is as the Holy Spirit begins to press, because he won't leave you where you are, as the Holy Spirit begins to, to work on that area of your life and it feels like you're getting crushed, what's gonna come out is this new life. And today, as the Holy Spirit begins to press in on areas, because he will, that maybe it's just down to your walk. You know you haven't been in the book for a while. You know you haven't hung out with that friend because they'll talk about God. And you know that it's the Holy Spirit going, man, you, you need to, you need the book. You need your friend. He's just pressing, he's just crushing. For some of you, it's your marriage. You're hanging on by a thread, but man, you look good today. And no one knows you're hanging on by a thread. And today the Holy Spirit wants to press and crush into your marriage because he's got so much more for you. Some of you got kids and they're wayward and it crushes you all the time and you don't know how to navigate the wayward child. The Holy Spirit does. Lean into the Holy Spirit. For some of you, you're already thinking about the person you shouldn't be thinking about. And you're sitting in church listening to a sermon on the Holy Spirit. And today he wants to press and crush and set you free. He wants you to hear his voice. For some of you, it's websites you'll go to later. Holy Spirit's there. For some, it's addiction. He wants to set you free. The Holy Spirit wants to roll out of this space into whatever's next with you. And he wants to make you aware of everything around that he cares about. He wants to roll with you from that space to your workspace tomorrow. And he wants you to care about the things he cares about. But it comes from us being sensitive to go, what we have been given is the power of God. You think about worship. We're gonna worship here in a minute. And man, worship is a space that, that we enter and it becomes so much about us. You ever notice? I can be so concerned about myself. Who's looking, who's watching, how do I sound? And the Holy Spirit just wants to ignite you to worship because it's what you were made to do. So I'm gonna ask the team to come out. this idea of we're crushed and we're pressed. Holy Spirit does his best work I found in my life when I'll give him moments to listen, when I'll give him moments to stir, when I'll give him moments to take what is hidden and deep and surface it. And in these next moments, as we worship and we declare that what God's doing in those moments of pressing and crushing is he's actually bringing out new, we call it wine, this new life, this new power, that today would be a day that you walk out free. Today would be a day that when you close down your screen, you walk away free because you met with the Holy Spirit. It's not about a band. It's not about me. It's not about any of this. It's about you and God Almighty in the person of the Spirit who the Father has provided through the Son to this moment to transform your life. So as we enter into worship, would you do it with open hands of surrender? And God, we're all in. Would you stand? We're gonna worship together.